Uh, yes, what are youth exchanges? I'm sure uh, you all know it uh, already because as I see you are, uh, you are quite experienced. But what's important, what is important is the meeting of group of young people from at least two different countries who gather from a short period to implement jointly a non-formal learning program. So it can be a workshop, exercise, debates, role play, stimulation, outdoor activities. The list is very long. And what is mo most essential that a topic of the interest, so the youth exchange, the topic of youth exchange change has to be uh, connected with the passions of uh, youth people, it must be created by them, inspired by them. And of course, if you are preparing a youth exchange, you can also prepare a um, preparatory visit to ensure high quality of activities to build a strong relationship between a partner to um, try a place where, where the exchange will be. So, but in the same that world, what youth exchanges are not. So they are not academic study trips. They are not exchange activities that aim to make financial profit. Exchange activities that can be considered as a tourism. So um, a group of young people can't go just to the mountain, for example, for hiking. It's not a youth exchange. Uh, festival holiday, travel, uh, performance tours, statutory meetings, training courses by adults for young people. So once again, the role of young people is essential. Uh, so as you see, um, there are not a huge changes uh, in comparison with old program. It's nearly the same. And eligibility criteria are also quite similar. Who can participate? Uh, a non-profit organization, association, NGO, European youth NGO, a public body at local, regional, national level, a social enterprise, a profit-making body active in corporate social responsibility, an informal group of young people. And in this, um, the same as our old program, mm, the organization must be established in program country or a partner country, neighborhood, the EU. So the same as uh, previously, regions one to four. And of course, you can find the uh, all information in the program guide. But the applicant must be established in program country. So partner country can be just a partner. Um, more, uh, a little bit more about criteria. So as previously, minimum two participants participating organization, duration of the project is the same from three to 20, uh, 24 months. And uh, the projects are for young people aged between 13 and 40, 30 and group leaders and facilitators, trainers, trainers must be an adult. So must, must be at least 18 years old. Mm. And there we have a little change because still minimum 60 people and minimum 60 participants per activity. But in the case of youth exchanges involving only young people with fewer opportunities, the minimum number of participants is 10. So it's connected with the inclusion prioritized to make uh, a project easier to you. Mm, and other criteria, at least one of sending organization or the receiving organization in activity must be from the country of national agency to which the application is submitted. Funding rule, so as I said previously, uh, there will be a biggest changes, uh, so uh, I will. I want to ask you to um, hear, uh, listening quite carefully, because we have uh, some new categories. Uh, organizational uh, support. Uh, it sounds like old category, but it's not, 
because now it, uh, it's a fixed amount, 100 euro per participant in youth exchange. Um, and it's based on the number of participants, excluding group leaders, uh, accompanying person and facilitators. So it's only for participants. And the costs uh, have to be uh, directly linked to the implementation of the, of the mobility activities. Travel is similar to the um, old one. Um, contribution to the travel cost of participant, including accompanying person and facilitators from the, the place of origin to the venue of the activity and return. Of course, you can find exact tricks in Erasmus program guide, but what is new, uh, it is a higher budget for uh, green travel. Mm. What is it, green travel? Mm, it's not very clean, uh, clear, uh, but it's for example, uh, it's for example, train with, uh, uh, yeah. And this is, uh, and we are having also new category, it's individual support. Uh, it's costing to substance. Uh, based on the duration of the stay part per participant per day. As it, this category also includes group leaders and accompanying person and facilitators. And it costs, uh, also includes um, one travel day before the activity and two are travel day following the activity and up to four additional days for participants receiving a green travel grant. And the next new category is inclusion support. Inclusion support. It's also 100 euro per participant in a youth exchange, and it's um, additional cost related to the organization of mobility activities for participants with fewer opportunities, and the accompanying person. And this is a real cost, 100 of eligible cost. Mm, like previously, we are having uh, money for a preparatory visiting support, but now it's a fixed amount um, per participant per, per preparatory visit. And uh, the second change is that now we are having only maximum one per participant per uh, organization. So not two as previously. We have also exceptional cost. Uh, there are costs for providing a financial guarantee, expensive travel cost, visa, visa related cost, residence permits, uh, vacations, and uh, medical certification. So it's a little bit connected with the COVID, of course. Mm. <clears throat> As I said previously, now it's two way of applying for funds. And the new one, it's for accredited organization. I will tell you later what is accreditation and application for funding and action from approved accreditation plan. Uh, technical conclusion without quite part deadline is uh, 11th May, May, once a year, and it's easier to get a funding if you have accreditation you are giving just a technical conclusion but in the same time of course you can apply in the old way for organization without accreditation and uh, we are now we are having uh, two deadline it's 11 may and 5th october so now it's two previously it was uh, three uh, deadlines Okay, what is accreditation? Um, Jakub thought a little bit about that. Uh, and you already probably know that uh, it's a tool for organization which operate for a minimum period of two years 
in the field of youth, but you are not obligated to operate in Erasmus program, just on the infield of youth. Um, you have to plan to carry out learning mobility activities on a regular basis. And accreditation is granted for a period of three to seven years. So it's really a long period and long-term plan. Um, and of course, it's for an organization which wants to open their activities to youth exchanges and cross-border operation. And if you are having an accreditation, uh, you have simplified access to funding. Uh, opportunities under action Q1 of the program. Mm. And we told you about it, but I will repeat it. Accreditation youth organizations are not eligible for funding under the standard mobility action for application. So you, can, you have to choose one of two uh, paths, not the, the two in the same time. Mm, but the inspection in uh, this year, uh, we are changing a little bit the rules uh, because I'm sorry, organization which were awarded the accreditation after the deadline for a grant request in May, may submit standard form application for youth exchange and mobility project of youth workers in the second deadline. So it's uh, at the end of October. Uh, application forms um, are already on the website of European Commission, so if you want to, you can uh, go there and try it. And um, now we can talk a little bit about priorities. So at a, as I said uh, previously, very important to European Commission will be inclusion and diversity because we want to promote equal opportunities, accessible and inclusive project activities, taking into account the view of participants with fewer opportunities and to work on inclusion and diversity as subject of the project. For example, to separate fight against stereotypes. And we are giving you uh, different tools, for example, uh, bigger budget with inclusion uh, category and short term, uh, short term of the project and um, less participants uh, to the project. So I think it's quite accessible to uh, create such a project like this. Uh, of course, another important thing is environmental sustainability. It's promoting environmentally sustainable and responsible behavior among participants. For example, choosing uh, the green um, ways of, Trump, of transport, raising the awareness about the importance of acting to reduce or compensate for the environmental footprint of mobility activities and design of Im implementation of youth exchanges with environmental consciousness. Of course, it don't have to be a topic of one exchange or of these priorities in this one time. Mm. Because of nowadays of now situation, another important priority is digital dimension of the Erasmus. So we are trying to incorporate the use of digital tools and learning methods to complete project physical activities to improve the cooperation between partner organization and to improve quality of the activities. And as Jakub said, uh, another important issue is youth quality standard 
and the implementation of all projects supported under the action must follow the Erasmus Youth Quality Standards for organization high quality learning mobility activities. So it is obligatory to you. And the Erasmus Youth Quality Standards cover the basic principles of the action as well as concert implementation practices for project tasks such as selecting and preparation of participant, definition, ev evaluation, and recognition of learning outcomes. So uh, it can be very helpful to you uh, in the time of preparing the project, a good project. And of course, the Erasmus Youth Quality Standards are available uh, in our website, websites. I think it would be nice, Ada, to clarify a bit more about uh, inclusion, uh, support, uh, I mean, people with fewer opportunities and people with uh, special needs. I think we can talk about this a bit more because there are several questions regarding this. Uh... Um, also as a budget category. Okay. Um... But give me a moment, Aga, because I don't know what exactly, what to cry for it exactly. And now I have some noises in my flat, so I can't, I can't. Yeah. There was a question, uh, what should we use for inclusion support? Uh, I, I think in terms of the, the budget category. Because I think that, that there was another question, what is, uh, what is inclusion in general and young people with few opportunities and uh, Agnieszka answered already to this question. So uh, maybe also how we can fund uh, young people with few opportunities within a project. Yeah, just give me a minute. To be honest, I don't know how much or much more than it's right in a, in a program guide yet. So we have to wait to acquire uh, more information about that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have any questions strictly regarding the budget, you can uh, write us on emails because as Ara said, we have to um, we have to talk with our financial department about uh, strictly uh, requirements, what is included in, uh, in those uh, pockets, because it's new also for us. Uh, but now I can see that it was also um, the question about uh, organizational support and the difference between organizational and uh, and individual support. Uh, so maybe this this we can talk more uh, a bit. I don't know if you, uh, uh, Ada, you do, would you like to, to talk about uh, organizational and uh, individual support? Again, maybe we can show the, the slide again. Yes. Yeah, because all we can show you is that uh, information that are in a program guide. We are not having another uh, documents yet. And I will start sharing, uh, sharing screen. Yes, yeah, so organizational support has to be directly linked to the implementation of mobility activities. And that's the all information which is uh, in the program guide now. Yes, so what we know now is that uh, uh, the new thing is uh, the individual support, which is mostly the same what was organizational support in previous uh, programs. So this is this amount like 29 in Georgia, euro per day and 34 in Poland. And the mm -hmm. new thing is this, uh, this is what, what is now called organizational support. It's a kind of unite, un, united costs. 
like 100 euro per person, uh, per whole uh, youth exchange. So if we have 10 people, 10 participants, we have 1000, yes. And uh, this 100 is without excluding uh, facilitators and uh, leaders. It's just for participants. And we don't know exactly what's inside. Uh, we have to talk about this with the financial department, but we suppose that it can be something like our beneficiaries were asking us, so like um, what to do to cover the costs of some materials, etc. So probably it can be that, but please write us uh, emails and we will for sure cover our questions uh, later on. Mm, yeah, Ruth. Hello, everyone. Pleasure to be here today. Uh, I've got one question regarding group leaders because we're going to be new now in youth exchanges. We haven't done them so far. That's why I'm here today, actually, to learn as much as I can. And thank you for all the information in advance. Um, regarding group leaders, like uh, then actually we can have somebody from our association taking a group of people uh, that are socially maybe um, um, with the social difficulties or economical difficulties, maybe they don't speak English at all, only Spanish. So if we involve one person, if this person is not maybe being part of the station, will European Union then uh, for this like some kind of a budget for these people who will be able to take the group of young people to another country for youth exchanges? Is there some kind of a budget for that? Or I'm, I'm confused just about that. Thanks. And like in general, what's the definition of a group leader for youth exchanges? Could you repeat the first uh, the first question? Uh, because yeah. okay, if we have a youth exchange, uh, yeah. and for example, our uh, young people from Spain don't speak English, and we need to have a group leader to take them there and guide them through the whole uh, like training or uh, you know the whole event. Well, uh, if we need uh, to take somebody who will not be from our association mm -hmm. uh, to represent our association, if nobody from us can go at the moment of the training, for example, uh, is there some kind of a budget from European Union that we can provide to, to a person who will take, uh, like a youth worker, who will take them? I think it's just uh, organizational support. Uh, mm -hmm. I got, mm, do you agree? Organizational support yeah. would be done. Mm -hmm. I think yes. so. Mm -hmm. Or maybe think... the inclusion also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh -huh. and I don't know if, if I understood you correctly, Ruth, but uh, um, there is also something, it's new for us also, we don't, uh, we are not sure, but it's something like a person who, um, who help, uh, who helps the uh, educational process. It's a kind of facilitator and uh, uh -huh. This is something like um, totally separated person because leader is something obligate, obligatory. You have, to, you have to have leaders for the group of participants and leader can be just adult, but it can be still a young person like 20 years old. And this mm -hmm. facilitator, this, this, this um, support person is something new, but what's uh, regarded the money for this person, um, the same, please uh, write us email because this is something we are not sure and we don't want to make a mistake now. Uh, so, so the same, but uh, like, like uh, Ada said, uh, uh, this individual support is also for leaders. So, yeah. Uh -huh, okay, so individual support is also for leaders. Uh -huh, okay. Yes. Okay, thanks. This thanks leader is obligatory and facilitator is no, not. So mm -hmm. also team leader. And... Yeah, so the leader is obligatory. And then if it's obligatory, it's individual support, right? For, for this new uh, program in 2021, 2027. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. There's also a question if the team leader can, and facilitator can be the same person. And uh, they're um, having a different role. So no, I don't think so. The team leader is the part of your organization and he do a lot in the project. 
and uh, the faci facilitator is someone who is staying next to you and help you sometimes with the flow of information and like that. Mm -hmm. And there is a uh, uh, Guram waiting uh, with his question. Yeah, hello, first of all, and thank you for the information you have delivered to us. So actually I have uh, two questions from the guideline itself. So I have a screen, but I cannot share the screen, but there is written, first of all, about number of participating organizations. And then there is written something like this, activities within program countries and all participating organizations must be uh, from a program country. So this leaves me some kind of impression that for instance, if uh, Georgia, like organization from Georgia is participating in the project, Youth Exchange, it can only participate in the one which is taking place on the territory of like other partner country, not in program countries, like more specifically, for instance, it seems for me that organization from Georgia cannot participate in the project from Germany or Poland or other program countries. Is it right or I just misunderstood it? Uh, I think it's a little bit misunderstanding because of course, Georgia is very welcome to be a partner in the exchanges with a partner uh, countries. But in the same time, it can be exchanged with a partner and the program country. So of course you can do a project with it for for example German Poland and Georgia. Yeah, and it can take place in Germany. Yeah. That, yeah. That's uh, yeah. But yeah, and uh, in Germany or in Georgia or in Poland. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe I will add to this. Uh, any organization from the um, partner country, neighboring partner country. Uh, that would like to implement a project needs to have a, a like youth exchange, let's say, needs to have a partner from a program country. So you can make a bilateral uh, project with Germany that can be hosted either in Georgia or in uh, Germany. You cannot have a bilateral project with Armenia. Uh, you need to have a partner from program countries. And uh, the more participants, participating organizations from different countries, this, uh, the, the balance also is very important uh, between um, the num number of neighboring uh, countries and program countries. So it would be difficult, for example, to fund um, a project where there are um, organizations from uh, German organization from Germany and then three or four organizations from neighboring countries. Uh, a, a program guide uh, used to quite specifically say that it's uh, also required that there is a balance between program countries and neighboring partner countries. Thank you. Can I ask one more? Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, we have kind of potential partner from uh, Portugal. But as we have seen, like we would like to participate in the project uh, which we would like to apply for this deadline, and it could be it will be like a standard use exchange. Like, uh, but I don't know if they have accreditation or not. And when I ask them this question, uh, they're also I'll say like uh, like the question is how can we check if they have accreditation or not? Because when I tried to look for the information about this organization in uh, like Erasmus Plus uh, platform, where there is like list of organizations, their like ID, their this PIC code and things like this, there is also written like a status, but the status is like NA certified, nothing like uh, accredited or not. So how can I check if they have accreditation and if they are eligible to fund for standard uh, project? Uh, so uh, this status are two totally different things because an art certification is a formal uh, recreation. Uh, it's, it's connected only with documents. And if you ask for accreditation, you have to applicate for, for it. So um, I think now you, you have to ask the organization if they're having accreditation or not. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but to make it clear, um, and our, your partner does not have to have this accreditation. Yeah. It's uh, just um, another option um, for, uh, for organizations to apply for, for accreditation and in this way, somehow facilitate for them the participation in the program. 
but still an organization that does not have accreditation can be still your partner 